Hey YouTube, here's Heiko in my garage. My 1974 R90-6 in front of us on my uh, motorcycle lift. Um, since we have lots of winter outside, I have moved my motorcycle inside, not driving at the moment, uh, or riding, sorry. Um, about six inches of snow on the ground, so that's uh, not really conducive to uh, safe riding. Uh, so I'm doing a couple little winter projects on my bike. One project is uh, installing a dual disc brake system here in the front. So right now I only have the rotor put on the rim just to see, you know, um, how it all fits. I have a second fork slider, or I have a fork slider for the right side that accepts a ATE um, caliper just like that one. So um, it's at a, a welding shop at the moment. The, the, the little extensions that come out that kind of locate the caliper and the brake pads they have a little bit of some wear on it so i have a welder uh, guy with a tick welding machine fill in those little uh, wear spots and then i will clean it all up you know these are pretty nice and clean and uh you know not much corrosion on it not much dirt the one that i got uh, came from the united kingdom great britain and they have a lot of rain over there that had a little bit more corrosion on it than mine. Also, it was painted in black, so I had to get the paint off. Um, and then the wear of the uh, brake pad eating into... Here, let me, let me show you on the other side what I'm talking about. So, the caliper is held in place with a cam that goes through here. So, that takes the brunt of the, the forces. But then... Um, these two extensions here, they kind of locate the, at least the inner brake pad, or which one you want to call it, the inner is here, the outer is here. It locates the outer brake pad in position, and when you brake a lot, I guess the forces uh, uh, push against this piece of aluminum, and then the steel carrier of the brake pad uh, has slowly worn a little bit of a divot into that aluminum. And so I am uh, filling that in by tick welding, then a little bit of some filing, cleaning up. And uh, then the fork slider is going to be ready. The internals in my fork are brand new. I have uh, a new fork seal for the replacement fork slider. Once it's all done, I also have new uh, seal rings down here also the internal one the little uh, crush washer that goes in here where the damper rod connects to the bottom here so i have that i do have a already rebuilt brake caliper let me see if i can find it real quick oh yeah here's my my messy little card um here's the caliper bought it off of ebay 60 bucks maybe um, it was missing the piston, so I bought a rebuilt kit from EME uh, for like 65, 69, 70 bucks. Piston with seals and everything, so this is already rebuilt. Yeah, it's different color than the one currently on my bike, but I'm not going to repaint this. Um, you know, I I like things nice, but this is original silver. This is originally black. Maybe one day when I'm really bored, I'm going to... I don't know, soda blast, not soda blast, uh, vapor blast this, get the old paint off and put new paint on. But uh, with brake uh, parts, I'm a little leery of sandblasting and, and, you know, that stuff. So, and I want to get it together. And it's kind of like a reminder that uh, this is an addition. So you can tell two different uh, colors caliper. I, I don't mind it at all. I, I just want to get it going. Um, get it all worked out. So I have a, a freshly rebuilt caliper already sitting here. I have a freshly made uh, brake line. There's a guy on Facebook that I connected to or, or got in contact with. Um, he's on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, he's DOT certified and he has the specs for all kinds of motorcycles. So um, 
he didn't even need measurements or anything. He already knew exactly how long this needs to be, which fittings and all that good stuff. And it was a killer price. I think I spent $45 for the brake line here. And uh, it almost looks like the one that I already have on here. This is also relatively new. That's why I didn't want to replace it. So I found this guy. Yeah, the, the older one is a little dirtier maybe. But yeah. So um, it's a business. It's not a private guy in his garage. So it's an actual business that does that for a living. So I bought those. Here are the reflectors. Um, here is the little brake line grabby do. Here is the cam already cleaned up. I took the old o rings out. And then I have a care package from, from uh, Max BMW. So there's the new seal. In here is the steel brake line that goes on the right side. Of course, I didn't have that. Uh, there's the bottom cap. In here is somewhere is the little spring that holds the cam in place. Then the seals. Oh, yeah. And then just recently, um, in the fork slider... Right up in here, above the caliper, is a little seal. There they are. So I'm going to replace this one as well, because I, I didn't do that. Um, uh, yeah, you pack that a little bit with grease up there. I don't know exactly why there has to be a seal ring. There's a um, bronze bushing in here, and here's a bushing in. I don't know, bronze, brass, a bushing and a bushing. And then there's a seal ring. I don't know why the seal ring has to be in there. But for the sake of being all correct, I'm putting a new seal ring in this one. And then also the one that I'm currently uh, restoring. Um, yeah, so those two seal rings just came recently. And then um, since I've owned this bike, I've only put 500 miles on the brake pads in this caliper. So they are going to stay. And about the same exact same brand. These are the EBC brake pads, V pad, semi centered. This brake is actually not bad, uh, considering that it's a single rotor, pretty small diameter, and this old fashioned swing type caliper. It, they're not bad. I mean, if if I increase the the brake force by adding uh, the second caliper. By the same amount this one is already delivering, this is going to be great. Um, I think they make quite a good improvement to uh, compared to um, organic brake pads. Organic, they wear really fast. They don't wear out your rotor, but they don't have much initial grip or bite. This here is kind of like a mixture. Um, so center plus uh, organic brake pad so it's kind of a little bit rougher on your rotors but a little bit more initial bite I really like it so far I have no complaints about the front brakes I'm already looking forward to having the second uh, second uh, caliber mounted um, you you guys are always very observant you probably noticed oh the bolts are not long enough he's gonna kill himself um, these are bolts from a hardware store just to put the rotor on. I'm not riding it currently. I have the original BMW part number correct bolts and nuts on order. These are actually really good. These are 12.9 grade. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the grading system. Um, so instead of grade three, grade five, grade eight, as you have on standard bolts, you have usually 4.8, 8.8, 10.9, and 12.9 on those metric ones. These are 12.9. Unfortunately, I bought the wrong length. So this is just a temporary to put it together to, you know, fit it. And uh, soon there's going to be another care package from Max BMW with the correct bolts and the correct nuts. And then everything is going to be safe. Yeah, so... Uh, Everything is coming together. Brake pads, little seal rings, caliper. It's already all sitting here, waiting for 
my fork slider to come back and then I will put that all together. Of course, I do also have the grommet that goes in here that holds the brake line. I do have uh, the O-ring that goes in here as well. And the O-ring that goes um, onto the, the plug. And also the rubber plug that goes over that plug. So um, this is all ready to go, just waiting for... Now this is a spring that I found in my you know, assortment of parts that I have lying around here, just to give you an idea. BMW parts, those are all the little knickknacks, another reservoir, tools, a little bit of wiring, uh, stainless steel hardware, then all kinds of goodies, more goodies, and more goodies. And all this came with my motorcycle when I bought someone else's project. So I don't know exactly if this is the same spring as uh, the one that uh, goes underneath the brake caliper cam. I just thought it looks like it. In here, somewhere in this care package, is a brand new one. And I'm just going to compare. And if I can confirm this is the proper spring, I will keep it somewhere with the brake parts. I'm trying to slowly identify bits and pieces. I have so many things that didn't even have anything to do with my bike. Uh, there's another set of wheels that are from a 1990s airhead with a mono lever. There is a front end and a wheel from a 1984 RT. Also has calipers and everything. Uh, these are all those bits and pieces that I get. To. Um, oh yeah, so. Let's get to what I'm actually doing right now. I just took the tank off, the, the sitting. Um, so many people are afraid of taking the tank off, but it's really easy. Anyways, I got a extra voltage regulator. I have an AGM battery in there. It's not the correct size. The battery is a little shorter or narrower than the, the one that goes in here, but it fits really nicely. Um, yeah, I, I just took my my little toolbox out. So on there it's 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 a Napa battery. Um, yeah, a little smaller than the original, but it's it's bolted down really nicely. It sits there very well. Um, and AGM batteries like a little bit higher charging voltage. So this um, EME regulator, it's not the adjustable one. This puts out a little bit higher charging voltage. I know it doesn't increase the capacity. So a 280 watt uh, alternator is still 280 watts. Uh, this just ups the voltage that the regulator gives the battery. You know, the, the alternator probably puts out 22, 24, 30 volts if you leave it alone. Uh, and the regulator brings that down to, I think this one does 13.8, the new one here. 14.2 and uh, this is a mechanical so clickety click in there and this one is an electronic a little smaller a little bit less stuff under here a little bit more space for other gadgets that i might install in the future um talking about electronic ignition maybe you know this bracket is kind of nice to put some other stuff next to it so that's going to go in there and then over here on my messy workbench I have this, oh my goodness, it's a Optimate USB 0108, it's a USB charger, pretty much what it is, it's just a massively way too long cable, on one end you have a USB port, no electronics in here, it's just a USB port, then in the middle is this little um, it controls the battery. If your battery voltage is too low, this will not allow the USB port to be active. Um, it also, if you turn the ignition off, since it's directly wired to the battery, um, it monitors the status of your battery. So if the voltage drops below 12.4 volts, it will turn it off, turn the USB port off. So you cannot accidentally completely kill your battery. 
and it also automatically turns the USB port off after three hours of no charging going on. So this is pretty nice. Um, yes, you are going to say uh, alternator doesn't put off too much, uh, too enough power to run any USB device. It's for my cell phone. It's 3.3 uh, .3 amp or 3,300 milliamps. Not terrible, considering that I've already changed most everything to LED. So there's LED in here, the rear light and brake light. Soon there's going to be an LED headlight that takes about half the wattage that the regular H4 bulb takes. And then there is also a cat dash in the future um, that's even reducing the light output of those three little light bulbs. Um, that's really the only electrical consumers that I have on here. Uh, and I think charging my cell phone will be okay, especially since this thing um, is monitoring my battery status as well. And then it came in a package deal from Amazon. Of course, now I didn't open this here. This is also the Optimate 001. What it is, is a hookup to the battery with a waterproof or water resistant connector that then connects to this, the SAE connector here. This is a, just a standard SAE connector, but they have their own version where they include, um, you know what guys, I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna open the box, I wanna want show you. So here it goes. This is the this additional cable. So it has um, ring terminals to hook it up to your uh, motorcycle battery. Then it has a inline fuse holder with a 15 amp fuse. Uh, I don't know why they do 15 amp. I guess this is a universal part. It's not necessarily um, always used with this thing. But since this is only drawing 3.3 uh, amp maximum, um, I guess I'm going to change out this fuse and put a 5 amp fuse in here because I, I want to, you know. But the fuse is always sized in accordance to um the wire the wire gauge so this wire gauge here i don't know exactly what it is uh doesn't say doesn't say what gauge wire gauge oh 18 american wire gauge there it is so 18 american wire gauge i guess you can draw 15 amps without frying the cable so that's why they put a 15 amp fuse in here i'll drop that down to five because i want to yeah, just be on the safe side then it comes with those little rubber caps i don't know why they have three different ones maybe if you have multiples of those you can kind of color code it and this is a water resistant connector sae connector that is compatible compatible to their own version of sae connector and kind of seals it all up so this connects to the battery, then this connects to this SAE connector, and then in this whole mess, you can't really recognize what I'm talking about. Hold on. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Right. Perfect. And then at the other end, you have the very small, also kind of water-resistant water USB pl plug connector. So when, when not in use, you just put a little cap in here. So no electronics here. That's kind of nice. So it makes it small and slim. And then I also have those little loops that help you to put some zip ties through it, to zip tie it to your handlebar or to wherever you want it. Um, he was on the pricey end. Uh, definitely more than those Chinese-made versions that you can buy on Amazon, like 20 million different versions. This one here, I think I spent about 40 bucks for. O108 and the O01. And it came as a package. I think it was actually $32. So it was actually not too bad. It's all waterproof. And the electronics here are away from your handlebar. And then maybe I can, since this is way too long, this is, uh, what is that? How long is this? 80 inches. 200 centimeters so two meters from there to my handlebar is 
not 80 inches but maybe since there is so much wire and i don't want to cut them up and and then put different connectors on it maybe i can even mount this little electronic doodad here in a place where i can see it where i can see the little led lights here and uh yeah good question somewhere hmm. i don't want to uglify my motorcycle but maybe in like a less obvious spot maybe like right right there so it's it's kind of hidden under this bench seat and the tank and you don't necessarily see it unless you're looking for it and then run it along the the spine here to the front and um i have one of those quick ram mount cell phone or tablet holders that goes right here on my handlebar and then i'm gonna put the usb port right there somewhere and then i have a tiny little short uh, short little USB cord that I'm going to use for my cell phone and then that's it so yeah um, I guess I'm going to run the cable along the spine uh, zip tie it on and then show you the end result and then we finish up this video thank you guys see you in a little while here's a quick look at the old voltage regulator um bosch obviously some duct tape around here i don't know if someone maybe in the past has opened this up and then it was mounted on this shield so this is to the front of the motorcycle i guess to protect it from spray water rain whatever huge chunk of steel galvanized steel the washers were a little rusty uh, the the bolts used were stainless the washers weren't so that didn't make sense. So I uh, just mounted that fresh washers and stainless steel bolts, much smaller. It's like a third of the height. And this, since this is all potted in epoxy, all the electronics are water sealed. I don't think I need this massive chunk of steel. I'm saving like three ounces of, of weight. The plug here goes back on here so i decided to uh put this little charge indicator optimate thingamajigger for the usb cable on this side opposite side of the uh, choke lever and then um route the cable through here in my little wiring harness retainer i actually had an open spot and that's where the cable is going to go and then it's going to be routed right through here with all the other goodies cables and stuff uh up to my handlebar so give me a second i'll be right back two small pieces of double-sided scotch mounting tape and some degreasing on both surfaces so and there it is mounted and now i'm just gonna tug away all the wiring here nicely i like to stay away from zip ties as much as possible because it just doesn't look good on a on an old motorcycle but uh i want to make sure double-sided tape um uh, uh comes loose that it doesn't dangle you know so i guess i'm gonna tuck it away hide it away somehow yeah we're getting there so here we go um stuck on just with uh, scotch mounting tape and i think that's going to be just fine ran it in between the the coils here um not to interfere with anything and then uh one zip tie right above the the vent opening here on the uh the starter cover and remember you always have to leave just long enough of a little uh, end here to cut your fingers open next time you work on it right then through this uh, wire retainer or uh, wiring harness retainer right over the new voltage regulator has nice rounded edges so there's nothing sharp that will eat right into it and then i put another very loose zip tie 
um, right next to the main wiring harness. And then through here, together with the two throttle cables, the tachometer and the, what's this here? Oh yeah, the brake cable. Um, and I put it in the back of everything so they are not, oh, sorry, I'm not even showing you what's going on here. They're not rubbing on the uh, USB cable. And then it comes on right up here between the, instruments and uh, top triple clamp around the handlebar mount around my ram mount and then i put a nice big zip tie through that loop there at the my goodness there you go loop there at the bottom and then i have a nice tool it's this puppy thank you mr augustine my old neighbor in las vegas he gave me this. Um, you can tighten up zip ties with it really nicely. So this one zip tie is now holding it in place and it's not wiggling, not moving. Unfortunately, zip ties don't last forever. They will eventually fail because of UV ray and plastic deteriorating. That's that end. And now we still have 10 inches of, uh, what, 10 inches, 40 inches of um, cable here on this end which will have to get connected to the battery all right I'll pause you and we'll take care of that and then show you that end result since this uh, complete wiring harness with a hook up to the battery is really long I came up with this plan um, there's this nicely sealed up SAE connector I uh, took off the cap that came with it because I'm not planning on taking this apart ever. Um, put a rubber band to you on here out of my wife's kitchen to keep those cables together. And then since the main spine of the frame is pretty much hollow, nothing in there besides spiders and dust, I decided to shove all the excess, the wiring that I don't need in there nicely tucked away like that and then I really only have the part with I, I might even make this a little shorter the part with the fuse and the two connectors and um, the the top and the bottom of the, the let's see there's a hole down there and there's a hole up here. The hole up here I'm not going to use, but the one down there, I'm going to secure this whole harness with one zip tie in place so it doesn't slide up and down, up and down, up and down every time I ride. But uh, uh, in that fashion, I can tuck this all away out of sight. It's protected from UV ray. Uh, the connector is inside the tube where there's never going to be any water unless I dump it into a river but uh this yeah it's turning out so the the spine tube here is going to be the storage uh, storage space for all this wiring here this extra harness so yeah, I'll stick it in and then show you one last time guys I'm not trying to drag it out but I'm kind of excited about this so now it's all done it's hooked up uh the terminals actually have a a little plus and a minus on the plastic right there so it seems to be all really very good quality um, the fuse block sits right on top of the battery uh, might have to flip that to its side when the toolbox goes back in here so that we don't have any interference and then the, the remainder of the harness here went into the uh, frame one little zip tie not too tight uh, I actually have some indication already. Um, it's showing right now two LEDs. Hey, can we focus? Two LEDs. Um, the system might be a little confused because my AGM battery holds a really high uh, voltage even when the motorcycle is not running. Uh, even my trickle charger doesn't like to charge it because it's... Uh, way higher than a normal battery. So the output voltage of my trickle charger is lower than my 
standby voltage in the battery. That of course will change over time. Uh, the voltage will drop and uh, this thing will stay on for three hours and then turn off. Uh, unless it's things that we're charging at the moment. So that might be a problem. Yeah, I guess I will have to keep an eye on that. Um, I don't know if you guys saw that there is something else hooked up to my battery here. There are, are besides the normal negative and positive uh, uh, main wires going to the motorcycle, there is uh, another negative and a positive going to my little old-fashioned uh, Dean, D-I-N outlet, which I'm not using for any accessories, but I'm using that for my trickle charger. Uh, let's see, sitting over here. Yeah, there. So I have the trickle charger with that plug equipped. So when I park it, I uh, plop that in here. But at the moment, the battery voltage is still so high that it constantly gives me a error message telling me voltage is too high in the battery. So it's assuming that something is already charging it, which is of course not the case. Um, yeah, so all installed voltage regulator. Uh, since we're at it, um, here you can see my master cylinder that I just recently rebuilt, um, like 600 miles ago. I got this re-sleeved by Apple Hydraulics. They have a web page. They are kind of specializing in uh, um, automotive hydraulic systems. So they, they know all about those. And uh, when I had it in for a re-sleeve, this is a 14 millimeter uh, a master cylinder. They also ported this for a second brake line. So right there is a plug in here for now. I can take that off and then put a second brake line right in there. Yeah, and oh yeah, my hose clamp that holds the master cylinder on the frame, I put some um, shrink tubing over it so it doesn't eat up the powder coating here on the frame. All right, guys, uh, I think that was enough rambling, enough talking. Voltage regulator, USB port mounted to the handlebar right where I need it. Uh, I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, $32 off of Amazon. And uh, I will maybe give you an update once I figure out what to do about this. Because if it thinks that it's charging at the moment, then that's wrong. And that might be a problem. Alrighty, guys. You guys take care. Have a good one. Bye.